publish and be damned, said the mail on Sunday. And they sang hallelujahs throughout the land, as well they might. The mail on Sunday published stolen material from the outbox of the outgoing British ambassador to Washington or the inbox of the Foreign Office in London and plastered it all over their front page, bringing down the ambassador, almost wrecking Britain's relations with the Trump White House and causing an international convulsion, paralyzing diplomacy between two formerly close allies. In the middle of two weeks of publication, the Metropolitan Police Scotland Yard warned newspapers not to publish any more stolen material from the cache of emails. The entire political class united against the Metropolitan Police. The leaders of the Conservative Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Labour Party all denounced this effort to criminalize the publication of material that was true and in the public interest that it should be seen. Again, I sing hallelujah, but I'm asking you, what's the difference between what the Mail on Sunday did and what WikiLeaks and Julian Assange did? Why is the editor of the Mail on Sunday, the cock of the walk, the toast of Fleet Street, while Julian Assange is behind the grim prison walls of Belmarsh, awaiting deportation to the United States, where he may face 170 years for doing exactly the same thing. Stolen material in the public interest that it should be seen, published by a reputable publisher. And WikiLeaks is a much more reputable publisher than the male group of newspapers, whose proprietor, I remind you, was a close friend of Adolf Hitler, and who've had to retract and apologize for thousands of false stories published over the years. WikiLeaks has had to retract precisely none. Julian Assange ought to be included in the toast to free speech and freedom of expression, alongside the editor of the Mail on Sunday. If it's true, if it's in the public interest, it's going in. That ought to be the watchword of all decent publishers.